Today I'm going to show you how to make beer look amazing in Photoshop part 2. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we got a really cool tutorial for you guys. It's actually part two of a series we're doing on making beer look amazing in Photoshop. We're working with Guinness because it's my favorite beer and it's amazing. It's really cool because it's like a very dark beer with a really light big head on it. And today is part two, which means we're going to be adding to what we did in part one. If you guys haven't seen the part one video, be sure to click on the screen right now so you can see it should come up right here so you can see part one. All right, let's get into today's episode. We're going to be adding bubbles to the Guinness. We're going to be adding some condensation on the glass. I'm going to show you guys how to add a reflection to glass. We're going to add a glow behind the glass. And we're going to do some amazing cleanup on this. It's going to make this image look like this. So in part one of this tutorial, we changed the beer. We originally started out with this and we made all of this happen. So we're already on our way. Now we need to create the bubbles and the condensation. And to do that, we're gonna use a custom brush. So our custom brush, we're gonna hit Command N to create a new document. And I want this to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. We're gonna hit OK. And I wanna make something that looks like a bubble. <laughs> now this is something that it doesn't have to be totally perfect and again this is something it's not a completely photorealistic we're doing the best that we can with the original image that we were given. Okay let's go ahead and fill that with black. So we've just got a circle we're going to fill with black and then I'm going to create an area here and we're going to fill that with white and then just a little one down there we're going to fill that with white as well. So that's going to be what looks like a bubble. And if we zoom way out, it should look like, oh yeah, that kind of looks like a bubble. Okay, so we're going to hit Command J on that layer and let's just transform that. All right, move this right down here and we'll create a smaller version of it. Maybe give it a nice rotation and then hit Command J on that again. Command T to rotate that. And there we go and squish it up. So doing this a couple different versions just like this. What it allows us to do is make a brush that's going to have these uh, really wide spaced apart bubbles and it's going to make it look a lot more real. You want to do this anytime you need like some nice random spacing. Okay, so with, this is going to be our bubble brush. We're going to go to edit, define brush preset and we're going to go down to bubble or actually I guess this is condensation, not bubbles. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and switch back to our other window and I'm going to show you guys how to actually use this brush. So, We've got our condensation. Let's go ahead on a new layer and I'm going to paint with white. Right click and we're going to choose that last brush. So after you've defined a custom brush preset, just choose your brush tool, right click and then you can go to the very last. There we go. The very last brush and it says cond, which is the brush. Okay, now if I just click a couple times, let's be sure to keep our flow at 100 and our opacity 100. It's going to make things that look like this. All right, we're not there yet. We need to make our brush a little bit smaller. Okay. So it's going to look like that. All right, looking looking good. Now let's go ahead and go into our brush properties. And I'm going to turn on shape dynamics. So we're going to turn on our size jitter. We're going to turn on angle jitter a little bit. And we're going to turn on scattering a little bit. So as I paint this around, it should look like that. All right. And that looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead here in our brush tip shape. I'm going to bring our spacing up so we don't put down quite as much whenever we paint. Okay, looking great. We're going to hit Command A and then Delete. So what we want to do with this, we don't actually want to paint with white. That doesn't make any sense. We want to paint with black and it's going to look like it's condensation over top of these drips. So on a new layer, again, and again, we want to clip this or paint with black. And I'm going to just paint this right over top of our Guinness right here. All right, making sure to have some of these be really nice and small. And then some of them I want to be nice and large. Okay, this is looking good. Now, let's take Command A. I'm going to just make these, make a couple more of these bigger ones. There we go. We do want some big ones in there. And what the nice thing about this is it really does allow for quite a bit of variation when you're creating your, all right, let's zoom out to there, when you're creating your little bubbles. Now, that looks okay. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's try one more time. 
You're going to have to play with your sizing here quite a bit. You know, it's not, it's probably not going to look perfect the first time you do this. All right. You know what? I can't really see the little, the little white areas. So I'm going to go back to my other window. We're going to go back to this guy here. And I'm just going to make, we're going to redefine this brush preset, okay? This is a process that, there we go, that you guys will probably have to do a couple of times. So I'm just going to show you how to do it in this episode. Like I didn't see enough of the white area right there. It was, I was only seeing black. All right, so no big deal. Just add a little bit more. Go to define brush preset again. All right, so we defined our brush tip shape. Let's go back to our other document now. And we'll go here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer right above these and go in with our brush tool. We're going to right click and choose the new brush preset we have. Now let's go ahead and turn our shape jitter, our shape jitter on here. We're going to turn the control off. So these are all just going to, you know, kind of go at their own random pace. There we go. And there, all right. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller still. All right. Very nice. Okay, so we can see that looks like basically like condensation on the glass, which is really, really nice. A couple of these are larger, and then we'll add some more of these smaller ones in here. Okay, so that looks good. Now we're going to do the same over top of this strip here and over top of this other strip here on the left. Okay. So we've got our little bits of condensation, things like that. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that these are not visible over top of the Guinness as well as, you know, we don't want them visible over top of there. So we're going to put a layer mask over top of that and I'm just going to choose a regular brush and we're just going to layer mask these off of our type. You can make a selection and things like that to do so. I'm just going to quickly get them away from our type. There we go. And this is working because basically it reflects the original black color that's in the glass. So that's why we wanted to create these little bits of condensation or whatever as being black. Okay. Now, while I'm at this with the brush tool right over here, what we're going to do is I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this little guy. All right. This was just a reflection that was left over and I'm just going to use the brush tool and get rid of it. And if you make an error, you can just erase, erase your errors away. All right. You could totally use a selection, things like that here. I'm just going a little bit quick. All right. So there we go. This is looking really, really nice. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask. And I just want to, we'll layer mask some of these away from the bottom. Okay. So that's the condensation. Now we've got one more step. This is going to be creating another set of light. So we created the dark and now we need to set, create the light parts of it or else it's going to look really flat. So again, what I'm going to do is we're going to hit command and we're going to create a new document again, and then we're going to create a new shape. So here we're going to create a circle just like that. I'm going to fill this with black and then inside of here, let's see something like this. All right, there we go. I'm going to hit delete. So we've basically just got this that's going to wind up being a brush. I'm going to hit command J, make another one down here and make that nice and small. Okay. So this is going to be our next brush. So we're going to go to edit down to define brush preset. All right. And we'll call this bubble and hit okay. Okay. So now we've got our second brush and what we're going to do is basically we're going to be able to create this. So we've got the black and on a new layer, we're going to clip that as well. We're going to use our brush, create this new guy and we're going to paint with white. So you can see it looks like bubbles, right? It's like, Oh, that actually looks like bubbles, but they're not going to be anywhere near that big. We're going to make them nice and small. Okay. There we go. And we're going to go to our brush and we're going to turn on our size jitter, minimum diameter, turn on angle jitter just a little bit and turn our scattering up. All right, there we go. Turn our scattering way up. 
Okay, and our spacing nice and far down. All right, and with this, we're just gonna add a little bit of definition to our glass. It's gonna look like the light bits of condensation. So you have your dark bits of con con <laughs> condensation. You have your dark bits of condensation over top of the light areas, and then you want your light er bits of condensation over top of the dark areas. That's just gonna be how, how the light is going to kind of catch things. All right, so doing this is really gonna help out, just kind of add that nice extra little step and make it look extra delicious. All right, and we'll put some of this near this side and it'll kind of make it look like, there we go. It'll make it look like that's where the light is catching on right on the edge there. You know what we're talking about here where the light catches the edge. All right, and we're not gonna put that on the other side. And the reason is because we have light all the way to the edge here on the left side, but the right side, we actually have a little bit of space there, okay? All right, that looks good. So we can see, let's just zoom in again so you can see, there's the before and the after. And you, right over here especially, that's looking really good. And I'm trying to do this relatively quick. I would recommend if you guys are you know, doing this for real, spend a little bit more time on it. We're gonna go, we're going fast because of the tutorial, but there we go. All right, so we've got a couple of, couple of bubbles going on, looking really good. So we can see, let's just look at the before and the after. So the two different type of bubbles, they added a lot to make this look really a lot better. Okay, so now that our bubbles are in place, our reflection is in place, Everything looks good. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and group this layer. So we've got all these layers are clipped down to my original Guinness, okay, which looked like that. We're gonna shift click all of these layers all the way down here, and I'm gonna hit Command G. So all those are in a group, we can move them around and things like that. We've got our Guinness. Now let's go ahead and grab our crop tool, and I'm gonna make this quite a bit bigger. There we go. Just to add a little bit more space and I'm gonna hit enter there. And because this is a color fill layer, it will automatically fill in our background. Okay, so that's our Guinness. I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate that whole group and then Command E is gonna merge it together. So now we have one layer that's basically just the Guinness. Looking good. We're gonna hit Command T, right click and say flip vertical. So this is gonna be right upside down there. Now it's not gonna be a perfect reflection. We know that because this is it's very hard to get a perfect reflection, especially if we have a rounded bottom there, but it's gonna look pretty good and it's gonna be nice and dark. All right, let's go ahead and load a layer mask on there and hit G for the gradient tool. And we're gonna paint with a linear gradient, foreground to transparent color, and black is our foreground color. So what it's gonna do is if I hold shift and click there, it's gonna create a gradient that looks like this on the bottom. Nice and just fading that out for us. Okay, now let's choose a normal brush there we go, and we're going to just make it invisible. There we go, except for where we have the underside of this, and then we're gonna lower the opacity a little bit on that, giving us just a nice glow, nice reflection there on the bottom. All right, we can kind of recenter our, recenter our crop a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got our reflection on the bottom. Now what I wanna do, we're gonna create one more layer and we're gonna use our gradient tool again. This time I'm gonna use the radial gradient. Let's go in and I'm gonna choose a color that's here on the actual harp. There we are. We're gonna zoom out and with our gradient, again, we're gonna choose radial. This is our foreground to transparent gradient and I'm gonna click in here in the middle and just drag out, just like that. Okay. Now, here's where the other part, important part of, remember in the first episode, we spent some time in the very beginning cutting our beer out of the background. That was important because we used the same selections to make all of our highlights on the beer. Now it's important because it's defining the outline of our beer. So when I create this highlight right above the beer, all I have to do is move it right down below the beer. And there we go, we've got our, let's change our selection there, we've got this nice glow behind the beer, and I don't have to recut anything out, I don't have to think about it, it's already done for us. There we go. 
And we'll just change the saturation maybe down just a little bit. All right, there we go. Kind of bring that out a little bit. You can kind of play around here as much as you'd like. I just wanted to give it a little bit of a, there we go, that looks really nice. Just a little bit of separation from the background. Like this, it looks good, but I think just a little bit of separation helps you see that nice clean edge on it as well. All right, let's go ahead and hit the crop tool. Again, we're just gonna crop this in just a little bit there to give us like a magazine type crop. All right, and we'll hit enter with our Guinness right there in the center. You know what, I wanna crop this out just a little bit. Sorry, I'm picky when it comes to the crop because it really is important. There we go. And that's a beautiful, beautiful Guinness. And we started off, I'm gonna just show you guys what we started off. We started off without that, without the reflection, and without any of this. Okay, so let's create a new layer that's a stamp visible layer, then I can turn these off and on really quickly to show you what we've got as our before and our after. Beautiful. Okay, so here is our before and our after in two parts. Pretty amazing what you can do in Photoshop. Let's just change this background to black, hit F for full screen, and there's our beautiful pint of Guinness done completely in Photoshop from one image. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We create several of these videos every single week for free, and you guys can keep up with them by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if this was a little bit tough for you, if you wanna learn a little bit more about Photoshop, be sure to check out our pro tutorial, Photoshop 101. It's three and a half hours long, and it shows you guys everything you need to know to get used to using the program of Photoshop so you can actually do really creative things like we did today. And if there's anyone in your life who loves Photoshop and photography, be sure to tell them about flurn.com by hitting that share button on YouTube. Thanks again, and I'll flurn you later. I need a beer. Oh man, that's a tasty looking beer. <laughs>